Hi everyone, this is Penny and this is Saturn in the fifth house, the last of my Saturn in the houses videos. If you have not already, I highly recommend you watch the video for your own natal chart placement where you have Saturn from the moment you were born. That will affect you throughout your entire life, but also watch the video for the transit that you are currently going through. Like Saturn is in Scorpio right now, so whichever house Scorpio rules for you, that should be about something you've been experiencing recently for the past however many years. And also we have Saturn moving into Sagittarius soon in um, late December, I believe. So Saturn in the fifth house. These people are kind of in a quest to experience happiness and learn what it means to be happy because they don't really let themselves be children. Um, they never really feel young until they are older. They want to show people how mature they are. They don't want anyone looking at them and being like, oh, you're just a child. They really want to impress the adults, their elders, with how mature they are and how many goals they have and they would like to be praised for that. You really want the adults, your parents, anyone who's older than you, around you, to look at you and be like, wow, this kid is so mature. Look, they're already, they've already got their stuff figured out. They have all these plans for the future. And it's not until a little bit later in life that you learn how to just have fun and awaken your own inner child and the strength of that creativity and freedom where you're not trying to prove anything to anyone because you are someone who wants to prove yourself. This combination of the fifth house and Saturn you want to prove yourself. You want to show everyone what you have. You don't want to be seen as some little kid. And you're going to realize that it's okay to be a kid. And you need to learn to have fun and relax. Because being a kid means you cry, you express yourself, you do things just for fun. and. You might try to do things that will make you happy. You're really trying to figure out what is going to make you happy. Will accomplishing things make me happy? Will being in a relationship make me happy? Will going out and partying make me happy? And that's going to cause problems. You're going to take the things that you try to do in order to have fun a little bit too far and they're going to end up hurting you because you're not letting that inner child free. You might not have really experienced true happiness as a child and childhood is the time when we're supposed to be happiest. We don't have a thing to worry about. We're laughing, we're playing and you know what? That's going to come for you a little bit later in life. Now I think people with this placement have very strong creative potential but the problem is in self-criticism. The problem is looking at the things you've created, looking at your true self-expression, things that came from your heart and rejecting that, saying that's not good enough. Maybe when you were a kid your mom didn't let you paint, maybe you played an instrument and your dad came in and he told you like hey that sucks and something along those lines just made you feel like you can't do these things the same way everyone else can. You can't just paint a picture and be like, oh, look at what I did. This is me expressing myself. And you're like, no, this has to be really, really good. I have to work hard to show everyone how awesome this is. And it shouldn't be like that because what we want when we see something creative, we want someone just really being honest about what they're feeling. Like, you don't need to prove anything in being creative. It needs to be honest. But the good thing is really in this place that is usually not that responsible, usually not that hardworking because people who are creative a lot of times are also very lazy and you can have so much creative talent but you never use it. So 
you, where you have your creativity, you also have hard work, and you're willing to put forth a lot of effort in whatever kind of creative expression you choose. And that is awesome. You just keep fucking practicing, and you're going to kick the world's ass, okay? <laughs> but even if you have that traditional sort of accomplishment, you go to art school, you take traditional lessons for singing or music or whatever, and you grow up like to age 30 or whatever, doing this the way you were told to do it, you're going to have that kick-ass background. So that when you decide to really take your creative freedom and go crazy with it and mix it up, do something that isn't traditional, it's going to be awesome because you not only have the creative potential, but you worked really hard to get there. So there's nothing wrong with, in your younger years, you just focusing on the hard work and the proving yourself. And then when you're older, that's when you break free and there's really no stopping you. And that is something to be really excited about. I think for the most part you grow up and you're really strongly against drugs and alcohol. Anything that is conceived as being irresponsible, out of control, crazy, partying, you're like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be a good girl or a good boy, so Santa Claus will come and give me my presents instead of a lump of coal. But I think in your late 20s, that's when you're going to find yourself really searching for happiness because you want to know what it is that is going to make you happy and you're going to break free you might um, you might get a little bit crazy with the partying and stuff just trying to figure out what you've been missing and you might think that maybe it's just because you didn't partake in these irresponsible behaviors maybe that's why you haven't been able to be happy in the same way other people have but that's not really it you don't need alcohol to make you happy no one should rely on that. No one should rely on drugs to make them happy. No one should rely on other people's approval, which is what you are most likely looking for, other people's approval. That's not healthy either. You shouldn't rely on having love and affection from other people. You shouldn't rely on people flirting with you or doing whatever with you to make you feel good about yourself. What you need to rely on is what's in your own heart and believing in yourself, knowing that there's something of value in there. There's just gold in your heart and letting that be how you shine, letting that be what makes you happy and experiencing life, being free, knowing that you worked hard for what you have, but always being true to yourself and not letting other people's judgment weigh so heavily on you. Don't let it be this huge hammer that comes along and smashes you. You're made of gold. A hammer can't smash you, okay? So you're likely going to find yourself at some point in your late 20s finding a place where things have gotten out of control. And maybe it's just you were flirting with a few people and you realize they got mad at you. Something just went wrong. Maybe you're playing too much World of Warcraft. I'm using that as an example because I play World of Warcraft. You're playing too much of some video game or something and it ends up being a toxic influence on your life. So, don't take the fun stuff too far. Allow yourself to have the fun stuff, but also find that balance in having self-discipline. You might really want to prove yourself. You might feel like it's taking forever for you to come into your own, but I assure you, someday you will have that recognition but the most important place for the recognition to come from is within. You're trying very hard to please everyone else when really you should just be trying to please yourself. And a good metaphor for this and something that you'll probably relate to is having sex. Yes, there are two sides. You please someone else, you please other people. But if you try too much to please the other person, you're not going to be able to enjoy sex and you're going to let them take away your freedom and your right as a human to 
have that relief and enjoyment. So finding sexual freedom is part of this placement and you shouldn't let other people abuse you in any way or tell you um, the way you want to have sex or whatever is wrong. And I think a lot of these people might be discriminated against from society, from a sexual point of view, like something you're doing sexually is wrong based on our standards. Like, hey, we don't like you, you're a slut, or you should not be having sex with these people, you should not be having sex with these people, your preferences are wrong, something along those lines. And that is another way where you just need to find yourself and be like, I don't care. You know what? I'm me. I will do what makes me happy and what I feel I need in life. And really this is pretty much the same problem that the sign Virgo has. Don't let other people own your sexuality. You're your own person. You deserve freedom. Get on with your bad self and don't let anybody stop you. But you can really find yourself in some dangerous situations, like maybe aside from having unprotected sex, you could also, like I said, be in an abusive sexual relationship that isn't good for you. So yeah, please just be careful with that stuff because things like that can end up going wrong pretty fast. And don't feel like the world of sexuality is some kind of competition where you have to prove yourself to other people or rack up points or anything like that. I mean, it's really your own objective thing or subjective. I get the words objective and subjective confused because it was on my test for the NREMT and I fucked it up like, whoa. Anyway. Anyway, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and watching my Saturn series. It really means a lot to me that I have this outlet to talk to people and work because as a lunar Capricorn when I'm going through a hard time, like I really just want something practical to focus on and something goal oriented. And as a Leo, it's like, it's good to know that people care about me and they support me even if they don't know me that well. And I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. And um, I'm not trying to be awkward, but thank you guys so much. <laughs> and I hope to see you back here for my next series, which is going to be Name Interpretation. <laughs> and I have a little form you can fill out on my website if you want me to do an interpretation for your name. So go ahead and check that out, and I hope you enjoy it. Bye.